Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Helsinki University startup stage here at Slash 2019. And this, uh, our conversations here today are also streamed to Think Corner, the Helsinki University space down in downtown Helsinki. So welcome also to everyone watching the stream. My name is Anu Partanen, and I have now here with us uh, Professor Edward Hegstrom, Professor of Physics and CEO of a company called Nanoform. That's correct. And then we have Helsinki Innovation Services CEO, Jari Strandman. Helsinki Innovation Services is the startup incubator, if you will, of Helsinki University. That's right. Thank you. Yes. Edward, tell us briefly, what is Nanoform? Nanoform is hope for sick people. There's a lot of drugs that don't make it to the market because the body can't take them up. We have created a tech platform that can bring back failed uh, APIs, drug particles. What we can do is to make them small. When we make them small, basically the ability to dissolve and be uptaken by the body increases. We have scaled it up from research to commercial. Last two weeks ago, we won uh, the biggest innovation award in manufacturing pharma, the CPHI. And uh, it's something which I think is interesting. We're preparing for human trials uh, next year, 2020. and. Uh, Based on the animal data we had, I'm hopeful. <laughs> Sounds great. And as I understand it, you are a professor of physics, but this innovation came about in collaboration with a, a, another Helsinki University professor of pharmaceutical chemistry. How did this start? So, Joku Yliruusi is a professor of pharmaceutical technology, and uh, we bumped into each other. He knew about the problem and he asked whether I had a solution and the rest is history. And I believe uh, Helsing Innovation Services then helped turn this innovation that you professors had created into a business. What did this look like from your perspective, Yari, when you first heard about it? Well, first of all, it was very interesting and, and exciting to see two major uh, leading professors in their fields you know, put their you know, uh, knowledge together in this way. And of course, uh, it, that, as, as Edward says, the rest is history. Um, and uh, so, so it, for our point of view, it created really a unique opportunity to combine two different technologies and, and, and then uh, become an interesting uh, and, and really exciting new opportunity for business. And let me be uh, very clear about this. We would not be here had it not been for this man here. Uh, he not only taught me how to do this, uh, he also uh, inspired me to do it. So, so uh, to me it's very, very important to understand that it would never have come to what it is now. So what was the concrete help that Yari and Helsing Innovation Services gave for you as a researcher? Two things. First, he explained how the dynamics of commercialization in practice works. So I hold an MBA, so I know the theory of it. Secondly, he was instrumental in uh, helping us win the first grant for getting the research from an idea to a first demonstration that maybe this could be done. And how did he help? Did he help you put together the proposal or, or just in terms of encouraging you to apply for funding or, or create a concept that will get funding for business? I think that uh, Yari is a guy who sort of got me to shape up a little bit and be a little bit faster and a little bit more aggressive. And uh, no, he did not write the application, I wrote it myself. But we had very, very clear uh, conversations about uh, how does this kind of our application differ from an academic application and that was very helpful to me. And so what are the questions you find, Yari, when you work with researchers? Uh, that they have that you can specifically help with them? Well, I think uh, Edward covered that quite well and thank you for the kind words. You're um, welcome, you deserve them. <laughs> thanks. And um, uh, quite often, um, you know, the researchers, um, uh, uh, which is very natural, you know, think about the technology, think about the, uh, the how, how the research actually can solve big things and, and maybe help the world. Uh, on the other hand, you know, this type of uh, um, uh, commercialization needs a little bit different or quite a bit of different uh, approach. You need to have 
start looking at the case from the eyes of outsiders, out, uh, like people or partners in the outside world. And that's kind of one of the formations that we help uh, maybe researchers and inventors to, to see that maybe you need to look at this case a little bit differently and then that it'll become uh, much more easier to understand and also you know people would understand that what is the brightness and what is the brilliance you know behind the uh, invention actually and edward you are the ceo of this company so how did you decide that you want to be also involved in the business and many researchers if they have innovation they're happy to hand it over to someone else to build the business but you decided to take an active part I never a guy who likes to watch I like to do and uh, I knew I wanted to do it because then I can't blame anybody else and I want to take this case to the New York Stock Exchange so you can write it down and then if I make it there I buy you a cup of coffee if I don't then you buy me one we'll take bets now how it'll Always. go <laughs> and so Yari what do you think other researchers could learn from Nanoform and the process of, of it becoming such a successful, just awarded company? Uh, well, there's difficult to point out any, any, any single things, but of course there's uh, you know, the excitement and uh, kind of seeing the, uh, the opportunities also that, that there are for the commercialization and, and maybe to understand that you know, everything is possible, you know, kind of uh, just you know, keeping, keep the dreams open and, and, and alive. And there's our organization, the whole his uh, Helsinki University uh, Services team, that helps you know in in order to to formulate your your case towards the uh, uh, kind of the language that the uh, um, commercial world understand a little bit better. And you also help find partners, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what we do, and uh, you know funding that is available through Business Finland. That's something that that we. Uh, that there's uh, available for for cases that are going towards the uh, commercial world, and and that's uh, that's very very helpful. So Edward, do you find that other researchers are they interested in in how to do this? Do they ask you for advice? And what are the kinds of things that you think are obstacles if researchers might have an innovation and then they're not quite sure how to go about it? First of all, I think the science we do in nanoform is on the same level as one does in the university. Uh, secondly, I felt that wandering into the commercialization realm extended uh, my research. I had been doing research for a long time. And yes, uh, people do ask for advice. I'm very, very um, humble. I don't like to tell people I've been only in this game for, what is it, four or five years now? So. I made, based on uh, my discussions with Yare, a uh, decision to change towards commercialization. And from our lab, actually, several startups have sprung out. And, uh, uh, you know, there was no plan, there was nobody telling that I had to do it. I just wanted to see if I could. So is that a culture that's contagious? Because like you said, several um, innovations and startups have come out of your lab. Is that something that you have encouraged? Or do you think it's just by virtue of example and them seeing that you already started Nanoform? Or are there some concrete steps that you have taken so that others in your lab as well take this path? Um, of course, example is one thing. People who have worked with me know that uh, when I want to do something, usually I get it done. And so where is Nanoform going next? Uh, we are preparing for a, a clinical trial. Uh, we are preparing to scale up GMP level uh, manufacturing. Uh, we are preparing for uh, an IPO. And uh, we're just preparing to start executing on all the promises that we have made. So it's a very interesting time. We're four years old, 40 people on the payroll, uh, big clients lined up. Uh, you know, I liked it when somebody asked, what's the bis big biggest business risk? And I said, it's execution. It's the first time I could say it. We've been working on this for 10 years. 
And so how do you manage now your academic career combined with being a CEO of a company that is heading towards an IPO? I manage my time in 15 minute slots and uh, I'm like an athlete. I don't deviate from my plans. I go to bed on time, I rise on time and do what my calendar says. And that's what it takes, do you think? For me. For you. Yes. And so, Yari, how about other researchers and startups coming from Helsinki um, University? Do most of them, uh, the academics, continue working with those startups afterwards? Uh, that depends very much on the case and, and what's required. Some of the cases uh, really require the uh, uh, researchers and the technical support. Well, well quite, quite often they, of course, require that, that uh, presence uh, a lot. But usually the more, let's say, more senior researchers uh, uh, it, it makes makes more sense their career uh, has been and, and will continue in the academic world and and still having the opportunity to, to get benefit of their inventions that were where they've uh, you know uh, been involved and, and, and uh, invented during their their research uh, projects so so uh, quite often there's in each one of the uh, cases that we spin out there's maybe one professor that actually remains at the university but maybe the uh, 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 other researchers that are seeking uh, also a career in the uh, commercial world, maybe they decide to join the company. That's, uh, I guess, you know, kind of a normal, normal way of doing. So, what about bringing investors and academics and research done at the university together? Um, it's my understanding often when I talk with researchers and businesses that both feel like it can be a challenge to find one another when you have an innovation at the university and then you have investors who are interested in new things but they're not quite sure how to find one another. What would you think, what is it that Helsinki Innovation Services does to help them bring together? What do you think, Edward, is, could work or would be needed in this regard? Well, first of all, you know, like being here is one, one of the things that, that we present the cases over here. Uh, we've got 12 cases now presented here. You know, obviously, you know, investors from all over the world. Uh, we have a specific event tonight that we're organizing with, uh, that involves plenty of investors to where, where the cases are available, I mean, presented over there. But of course, you know, uh, we have connections of, of our own. We, try to help our best, you know, to put, put the uh, teams together with the investors that are interested in that, that specific area. Uh, quite often, in, uh, you know, investors are seeking certain uh, fields of, of, of technologies uh, and, and applications that, that fit their portfolios. So we try to match those uh, uh, investors with the cases that we have. And so what do you think, Edward? What was the experience like for you getting investors to your company? And, and do you think there's something we could do better as university or as, as investors to, to have help innovation find its funding, funders? I hope that stories like Nanoform and others will actually help in this game by providing reference points. I think it's uh, important maybe to not only look to Finland first, but immediately start to look uh, both to Finland and abroad. I think it's super important to uh, build a pool of talented C-level people that you sort of can seed into the startups. And uh, I also think it's very important to actively uh, culture nurture uh, investor pools uh, because when you invest in early tech companies the bottom line is nobody knows and you it's a binary outcome either you lose all your money or you don't so so this means that building relationship over a longer period of time not relying on this kind of sort of ad hoc encounters is maybe something which is important of course, we, you know, maybe one add addition there is that the uh, investors, they invest a lot to the team. And one of the things that we're seeking in here, for example, in the slush, are really the business people that, are, that, are, that have the passion and interest in, in, in coming involved with the, with the cases that we currently have and, and what's in the pipeline. And that's always, you know, uh, one of the key things to put things, these teams together that are really looking for 
to take this out and have the certain excitement and passion to, to do that. Right. So, if any researcher wants to um, turn the innovation into a unicorn, they'll come to you? <laughs> Absolutely. There's one in a way. <laughs> yes. It's a competition. Which, who's going to be first? I will do everything I can to be number one. <laughs> Excellent. Good. That's the attitude. Thank you very much, Edward Hextrom and Yari Strandman. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. for having us. Thanks.